You know, when Darwin wrote his book on the origin of species by means of natural selection, the rest of the title was Preservation of Favoured Races and the Struggle for Life. Now, that book was about animals, but at the end, in the last chapter, he said, in the distant future, light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. Twelve years later, he wrote the book, The Descent of Man, and The Descent of Man inherently is a racist book. It really is. Darwinian evolution inherently is a racist philosophy, but it's taught in our public schools as fact. Now, it's interesting, if you look at some, some things that have happened, like recently, uh, the American Library Association had a, an, uh, an award named after uh, Laura Engels Wilder because of her little house on, on the Prairie series. And they decided when you look back and read that series, oh, there was racism in there. And uh, so they decided that no longer will they allow that award to be named after her. And we've heard of books being banned and all sorts of things because of so-called racism. Actually, if you read The Little House on the Prairie, Laura Engels, um, she was actually fighting against racism against the Indians, if you read it in the right context. And it's, it's, it's in the context of history that those books are written. Uh, here's the interesting thing. The, the, the girl portrayed in the books was definitely not racist. If you're going to say you've got to ban uh, a, a library award because of those books, they should be banning Darwinian evolution from the school system. But of course, that's not what they want to do, so they ignore that. You, you know, it's interesting. How many of you here have read The Origin of Species by Darwin? Have actually read it? I see a couple of hands, maybe three. How many have read The Descent of Man? I'm not sure I see any hands. Do you, you know, most school teachers, majority, have never read The Descent of Man. Do you know, in fact, most evolutionists don't even know what Darwin taught? You read his books and you'll see what he taught. That's why the late uh, Harvard paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould said this, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1850, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of evolutionary theory. In Darwin's book, The Descent of Man, he says, this is just one example, at some future period, the civilized races will exterminate the savage races, the break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider than the Caucasians and some ape as low as a baboon instead of now as between the Negro, Australian Aborigines and the gorilla. Do you realize what he's saying? The Australian Aborigines and, and people from Africa are closer to the apes than the Caucasians. How's that for racism? That's what Darwinian evolution is all about. That's why in 1924 there was a New York Tribune newspaper published that said the missing links were found in Australia, the Australian Aborigines. There were scientists from England and Germany who sent people to Australia to hunt down the Aborigines, to herd them over cliffs or into swamps and, and with instructions on how to skin them and boil up their skulls for specimens in the name of evolution. Do you know in 1925, the year of the Scopes trial, John Scopes supposedly taught from a particular biology textbook about uh, the evolution of man and so on. And actually, that was a setup by the ACLU. But did you know uh, the, the textbook that was sort of the center of this trial, in a way, and a major biology textbook used in public schools in America in the 1900s and was used in 1925, said this, the races of man, and based on Darwinian evolution, at the present time there exist upon the earth five races, the highest type of all, represented by the Caucasians, uh, represented by the civilized white inhabitants of Europe and America. Generations of kids in the public schools, based on evolution, were taught the Caucasians are the highest race. And we wonder why we have so much racism and prejudice in our culture. Now, of course, there's all sorts of other factors, I understand that, but I'm saying we've got to recognize that Darwinian evolution itself is inherently a racist philosophy. And in fact, I like to encourage the church, I want to suggest to us that we get rid of the term races. And I'll tell you why. When you go back to the Thomas, say Thomas Jefferson and so on, when you talked about races, you talked about an English race or an Irish race, the word race has changed meaning. The word race used to mean cultural group or ethnic group. But because of the influence of evolution, a lot of people today have been indoctrinated to believe there's lower races, higher races, primitive races, uh, and, and savage races, and, and, and all the rest of it. So people, I'm going to challenge us as a church, we need to get rid of the term races. I want to suggest to us we use the term people groups instead. Because here's the other thing. 
I will say to you that the, the people like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton are fueling racism by the very terminology they use, which actually is incorrect. Because they talk about the races and the black people and the white people. There are no races and there really are no truly black or white people. 